and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and I can't stop building Commander decks. I really do have a problem. It is the reason I started this channel, right? The inception of this channel was I was just building a whole lot of Commander decks, and I would, like, I probably use less than 10% of the decks I make. Um, I just come up with an idea, I make a deck, and then maybe I'll play test it a little online, and if I'm not loving it, I just throw it aside. And I thought, you know what? Maybe someone else will like it, right? One man's trash is another man's treasure or whatever. Not that any of the decks I make are trash, but, and that was the inception of my channel. That, you know, I was making so many decks, particularly with Commander Legends, that I'm like, I'll just throw it out there, right? And of course, nothing has changed. I'm still doing that. And I actually made a video like this a few months ago where I just threw out a whole bunch of deck lists. I go in phases. I don't know about anyone else out there, but I go in phases where I'll just, I'm just making decks and making decks like two, three a week sometimes, maybe more where it, it's just, I'll get triggered by something. Like I'll see a new card come out in a set and I'll just be like, oh, that'd be a great fit in this command. You know, maybe it's a new commander that I want to build around, but maybe it's just a card that sort of reminds me of this other commander that does this thing. And then, I, so I revisit that commander and then, you know, and then I end up making a whole deck and, you know, the, the process that I have, I've talked about on my channel a lot the process i have for deck building is very efficient so i can very e quickly crank out a deck list that is at least doable right of course every deck list has to be play tested and you you know eventually you'll swap out some cards but you have the the meat and potatoes of it right the the bones of the deck that you can actually run with and see if it actually your idea actually works and again rather than i just every time i make a deck i put a deck tech on my channel you know, that is, it, it gets a little, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Let's just say that. I would rather, and I don't know how many decks I have here, at least like 12 or maybe more. So I would rather just every once in a while, you know, every six months or something, I just make a video like this where I'm just like, here's a whole bunch of decks, right? If you guys are interested in any of these commanders. So that's what I'm doing here. I just have a whole bunch of commanders, some new, some old, some I've actually even dealt with before. And I'm just going to do a quick rundown of here's the commander and here's basically what I'm doing. And of course, the deck list will be in the description below for you guys to go do whatever you want with it. All right, so let's get started. And I am just going in alphabetical order here, okay? So starting out with Alron, funny enough, because this is a commander that I, man, I, and again, I'll just say some of these decks I am considering for myself, but as I've stated before on my channel a few times recently, I already have two mono blue decks. I don't know what it is. There's, there's actually a couple other mono blue commanders that I keep coming back to, like Maluko is another one. Um, I'm a big fan of that commander. Cosima is another one. Again, funny enough, mono blue lands theme that I keep coming back to. I could easily have like five or six mono blue decks. I don't really want to though. Allrond is one that I just keep coming back to. I have done it on my channel before way back. Again, right when I started my channel, Call Time was the first set that came out right after I started my channel. What I did is I built more around the hack aside because I thought that was pretty interesting. And, you know, I had stuff like Grafted War Gear where my hack is returning to my hand all the time. So I can very easily put a, a Grafted War Gear on it. It attaches for zero. I don't have to sacrifice it because it's already in my hand, right? And of course, I'm scrying lots there. And I went with a snow theme. Funny enough, they did that in the call time set, even though the commander has nothing to do with that. It, it did fit mostly because scrying sheets, I thought, okay, you're doing that anyway. Frost Augur was another one that came out in that set that just fit with the top deck scrying theme, right? Merit Lages Slumber is another one. Fits the snow theme, fits the scrying theme. So that was a great fit there. But I obviously I revisited again. This is exactly what I'm talking about because we got some scry tribal stuff recently in Lord of the Rings, like Lost Isle Calling, which, okay, I'm repeatedly scrying. So that seems like a pretty good fit there, right? We also got the Temporal Anchor, which, and, and man, I play tested this deck and man, is this, this card's really great value, by the way. You could put it in any deck because it is essentially almost draw two extra cards every turn, right? Because every time you scry, you just put whatever that is, you just put it to the bottom, then it gets exiled and you just play it. Like, so if it's a land, you just play it on your turn. Whatever spell, you just play it on your turn. But unlike Impulse Draw, which I talk about that I don't love, if you don't want to play it right away, just wait till the next turn and you can play it because during your turn, you may play those cards, Exile with Temporal Anchor. So of course, with your Hakka, now those scry 
right? N- now it becomes essentially impulse draw two every turn. So it's just fantastic value there. And funny old card that I found that uh, it didn't originally put in, but I put in the newer version, Mind Shrieker. This is a card you could put in a lot of decks. I think it's pretty good. One in a blue spirit, bird, one, one. And it is a bird and there's a little bit of bird tribal here. So that does fit. Has flying, pay two. Target player mills a card. Mind Shrieker gets plus X, plus X in the turn, where X is the card's mana value. So, of course, in this deck, I threw it in because we can very easily look at the top cards of our library all the time, and we can know there's a six mana value thing on top. We just pay two mana, and our Mind Shrieker gets plus six, plus six until end of turn, and... Maybe we'll do it again. You can mill like seven cards here, right? It, later in a game, like this card's really good. Later in a game, I can mill five cards if I got 10 mana. And this guy's going to be, this guy might be a one-shot kill. He's got flying. Pretty good card. So I thought it was a neat fit here. All right, we are moving on. Next up is Dralnu, which funny enough is another commander that I have done on my channel before. By the way, I'm, I'm, I am trying to skip through this fairly quickly because there's a lot to cover. I'm not going to be reading a lot of these cards. I'm not even going to be reading what the commanders do. If you're interested, if you're familiar, you can look more into it. I've done Dralnu before. I think it's a great commander. Um, and it's one of those commanders that funny enough, I mean, you tap to give an instant or sorcery flashback. So obviously I'm doing that. I'm doing that a lot. One of the reasons people don't go after this commander is because of that drawback. If damage would be dealt to Drown New Lich Lord, sacrifice that many permanents instead, that's awful, right? So if someone casts a Blasphemous Act, you're done for. And of course, you do have to be prepared for that eventuality. And what I did differently here that I haven't done before, I don't know how many people are actually doing this, is I'm like, okay, what if we did build around that downside, which of course we could do if we donate this to our commander. So I did a little bit, not a lot, but I did a little bit of the donate theme. Um, So I have cards like Sudden Substitution, where we can exchange control of non-creature spell and any creature. So I can steal my opponent's whatever, draw spell, removal spell, and donate my commander to them. And of course, because this is an instant, I can reuse it again with my commander, right? Ledger Domain is another one. This is a donate exchange spell, right? I shouldn't say donate. It's an exchange spell. I'm also giving it to my opponents, but I'm getting a benefit as well, where I'm stealing my opponent's best creature. And it also is a sorcery, so I can reuse it again later in the game. And of course, We donate to our opponents and then we want to deal damage, which is not super easy in blue and black colors, but there are some ways like enter God eternal. And I went with four as the bottom here. I thought, okay, if we're going to shoot our own commander, I think we want to at least make it so that they have to sacrifice four permanents because of course it's that many. And of course the downside here being is of course they'll just sacrifice our commander. So it's got to be worth it. You want to donate the commander and then shoot it for four damage and they have to sacrifice four permanents. One of them is obviously going to be your commander. So they'll have to sacrifice three other things as well. So I thought four seems like enough where I'm going through, you know, I'm jumping through a few hoops. I want to make it worth it. Ribbons of Night is another one, which is a blue black spell, sort of. It's going to deal four damage to target creature and you gain four life. And if blue was spent to cast it, you draw a card. So I, I think that's worth it right? Five mana. My opponent sacrifices some stuff. Uh, I also gain four life and I also get to draw a card. That's not bad. It's kind of janky too. It's kind of neat. Majoring Responder is a card that I, I've put this in a couple decks, you know, over the years that I actually thought was a really neat fit here. Seven mana, artifact creature, golem, seven, seven. Maybe people will be putting this in the new golem tribal commander deck. Maybe. Uh, it doesn't untap during your untap step and you, and you have to pay seven mana to untap it. That's pretty rough. But of course, because our commander has a tap ability, I have a bunch of untappers in here. So because of that, now I can very easily untap my Majoring Responder. 7-7 seven, seven creature's not bad, but also when it attacks, deals seven damage to target creature defending player controls. Hey, that's pretty good. So I can attack with this guy, kill my opponent's best creature. Or if I've donated my commander to that person, I can deal seven damage to my own commander and now they have to sacrifice seven permanents. It's a really neat fit in the deck. That's why I threw it in here. And I also threw a salt suit in here and I'm wondering if people are always doing this with their Drow New because this is gonna, again, donate your commander to everybody, but also your commander can't be sacrificed. So now if I put this on my commander, when I donate it to my opponent, they can't sacrifice it to Drow New's own ability, right? that this says can't be sacrificed. It's a pretty neat deck. I I think it's a neat commander and there's a lot of neat things you can do here. Let's move on to a brand new commander, Eleanor Gardener. And I've talked about the food mechanic quite a bit on my channel recently. Uh, I got some pushback, of course, because people are like, they like the food thing. It's janky. 
It's not janky guys. It's really not anymore. That's the, that's kind of the issue I have is they've been, they come up with so much support for the food theme now that it's no longer janky. It's really, really good. And again, I'll just point out like the one response to I had to the guy is name me another mechanic where they've ever done this in the history of magic. Name me a mechanic where, I mean, there are support, but name me a mechanic where there's support in completely different directions where you're not doing that. You're not doing the pay to tap sacrifice gain three life. You're not doing that. You're doing it taps for mana. It gives a buff to your team, right? They have all these things in food that are doing a whole bunch of different things that don't do what food is doing. Just like your commander, which is when you sacrifice a food, you go get a land, right? Name me another mechanic where they've done that. I can't think of one, right? So that that's all I'm saying. It's just a little weird. They're just taking food. And rather than saying people don't really like this food thing, it's not that good. Let's abandon it, which they do with a lot of mechanics. They're going, they really like somebody at Wizards of the Coast really, really likes the food mechanic. Maybe Mark Rosewater. So they're like, no, we're going to force people to use the food mechanics. So let's keep coming out with stuff that makes food really good. And of course, we got a bunch in Wilds of Eldraine. Obviously, I have the Lord of the Rings stuff here, but I don't have, I didn't add in the Wilds of Eldraine stuff. So that that you could also put in here if you're doing it. And of course, there's a bunch. So what am I doing in this deck? Obviously, I'm doing the food thing. I'm also doing the land thing. And as I talked about recently, if you're doing the land thing, you know, if you have a commander that is doing the land thing repeatedly, Root Path Purifier is just such a great fit here. This is a card that, of course, is not very popular in their commander format because it's specific in what it's doing. But if I have a commander that is repeatedly searching for basic lands all the time, Root Path Purifier just allows me to get any land. So I do indeed have the Dark Depths combo in here. It just became a win con in this. I just thought I'll throw this in as a win con in the deck, even though now I don't even know if you need it, but I do have a little bit of land search like Sylvan Scrying where I can go get the Dark Depths combo. And I also have Creature Search where I can go get Root Path Purifier and then also use that to go get the Dark Depths. You know, other than I'm doing the food thing, the land search thing, I, there's a lands theme here for sure. There's a food theme here for sure. I also threw Panglacial Worm in here, which is a, again, a card I've talked about quite a bit, where this is just a card you can throw in any deck where you are just searching repeatedly because it's just free value later in the game. So if I have a commander that is regularly searching and I'm on like, like turn nine, okay, I can sacrifice a food very easily. No problem. I can do that. And I can search my library, of course, because of my commander very easily. But getting a land is like, who cares? I already got lots of lands. Now, when my commander triggers, I can pay seven mana and put a nine, five trampler directly into play. So just a nice little add in to this deck. You know, there's a couple of neat things I'm doing here. I'm sure there's not a ton of big surprises. Um, I, I, this deck though, I'll just say it's pretty powerful. I played two games with it. I won them both. That's right. This janky commander that not a lot of people are going after. And again, I haven't even added in the food stuff from Wilds of Eldraine. And this is already a pretty powerful deck, I think. So just saying. All right, moving on to another Lord of the Rings commander, Gimli, Counter of Kills. And I'll just say there is only one reason why I built this commander. And in fact, you know, I, I was considering doing this for myself. You know, that's usually why I build decks. The main reason why I did so is because I just absolutely love the showcase art here. And there is, I think, about three or four of these uh, legendary showcase arts from Lord of the Rings that I ordered to put in my decks. I, only the ones that fit, but I did it only because I just love these showcase arts from Lord of the Rings. I really like them a lot. Like the Samwise I got for my Shanna deck because I just love that. It just looks great. It fits. Right, I, I only got it because it fits. I'm not show shoehorning in there for no reason. And the Gimli I, I got for my Bralin deck because I, I think it does fit. It, it fits the non-combat damage to my opponent's theme. So I am, I'm throwing it in there and I could consider building a deck. So that's really the only reason I built this deck. Yeah, that's right. There's lots of different reasons I build decks and, and that's one of them because I just really think that's cool art and then that's why I'm doing it. So I built this deck for anyone that, you know, it's it's an underwhelming commander, I would say for sure. Uh, fits in the 99 of a lot of decks. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, he just deals one damage to that creature's controller and... As I've talked about recently, it's so easy now, even an underwhelming theme like this, it's so easy now because first of all, I can just do the non-combat damage thing. Like again, the Chandra's Incinerator, I can do the, I'm dealing more damage. So Mechanized Warfare, which is a card I have in my, again, in my Bralin deck, all those themes I can fit. 
where now I'm just doing more damage. One damage is not a lot, but it's so easy to put all those damage doublers in here, which I did. I did put a lot of those in here. Obviously, we want our opponent's creatures to be dying. Aether Flash, again, some of my personal favorites. And, you know, you can do the donate a creature or give your opponents, right? Forbidden Orchard is a card I have in this deck, which is like, why do you have in this deck? Because you have to give your opponent's creatures that are going to be dying. So Forbidden Orchard with Aether Flash just becomes... Tap to add a mana and target opponent takes a damage, right? Vicious Shadows, right? Which again, we're in a little bit of a janky thing. Funny enough, the creatures dying in red is, you know, it's not that hard to kill creatures, but getting the payoff isn't great. Vicious Shadows is a good one. Rage Thrower, funny enough, is a good one because it's dealing two damage to a player. It fits with the the damage doublers, the non-combat, all that fits. So I have a lot of that in here as well. Mog Infestation, again, one of my personal favorites that I, I mentioned in a video way back in the day for this exact, this is a slam dunk in this deck, right? Because it fits the, I'm killing all my opponent's creatures, but it also fits the, I want my opponents to have creatures. So I'm going to destroy all my opponent's creatures here, but I'm also going to give them a bunch of 1-1 one, one goblin tokens, a bunch, right? And then I cast Blazing Volley, kill all those goblin tokens, and then I get a whole bunch of more triggers, right? So what a slam dunk in this deck. I also threw Purging Scythe in here because, again, this is another card that I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, cards like this just stick in my head. And this seemed like a good fit for it. At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals two damage to the creature with the least toughness. Just a weird card. It's sort of like I guarantee, almost a guaranteed get a dice trigger every single turn. Like five mana is a lot. I don't have to worry about this killing my commander because my commander has a three toughness. It's just a guaranteed I kill a creature every single turn. And I also threw Burning Sands in the deck because it works here. You are killing your opponent's creatures a lot. Can sort of be a, you know, it can help. It's not a win con. Your commander's the win con, but it can certainly help get you there. I think it's a pretty good deck. All right, Hansk. Let's talk about Hansk, everybody. Slayer Zealot. And I know everyone's going to say, who, what? Where did that come from? Um, this is Daryl, Hunter of Walkers. That's right. They actually revisit. I think they had originally said they weren't going to do it. They weren't going to reprint the... Walking Dead Commanders, right? Of course, Walking Dead Commanders, I think, were the original universes beyond or universes within. I keep getting them confused. I think this is universes within. I think universes beyond is the alternate IP and universes within is the magic version or something. If you were a big fan of the those commanders, but you didn't like having a commander called Daryl or Rick <laughs> or whatever. And I can totally understand that because I didn't like it. If you wanted to build around any of those commanders, they reprinted them, right? They did, they did the, uh, and I don't know if they made a big announcement about it. I came across it purely by happenstance, purely by accident. And I thought uh, Daryl or Hansk was the most interesting build around because I just like, I'm giving my opponents creatures that, that kind of thing I thought was neat. I'll just say I didn't love, I know they don't like to change the wording on the cards, but they ha they still have the, at the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent creates three walker tokens. I don't know why they didn't just say zombie tokens. They've ratted out the whole walker thing. So why not change that as well? I don't think it changes anything with the rules of the game because it says they are two, two black zombie creatures. So it already has that. So I don't know. I would have liked to see them take the walker thing completely off of here, but whatever. I'm doing what you would expect in the deck. I'll just throw a couple, like obviously great bow doyen because your commander is an archer is an auto include here and also just works with what your commander is doing as well. Whenever an archer you control deals damage to a creature, deals that much damage. So that what a slam dunk here, because obviously your commander is dealing damage to creatures. I also have some of my favorite equipment that fit with any commander that is dealing damage, as I say all the time, like Kusuri Gama. This one in particular, because your commander is dealing damage to creatures, um, so whenever a creature deals damage to a blocking creature, of course that works in combat, but it also works with just throwing damage around. So let's say one opponent is attacking another opponent and they declare a blocker. Hold on before, you know, after blockers are declared, I have something I'd like to do. I'm going to deal two damage to that blocking creature because then that like, not only am I, you know, likely that creature's probably going to die maybe in combat, but I am dealing two damage to each other creature that person controls. So Pretty neat uh, interaction there. And Nikote, same thing. When a crypt creature deals damage to a creature, tap that creature. As long as Nikote remains on the battlefield, that creature doesn't untap during it. So you just, it's an 8-8 creature, right? I just 
deal two damage to it, it's now tapped as long as Nikote remains on the battlefield, right? So pretty neat fits in the deck. If you were interested in the Daryl thing, but didn't want to do a guy named Daryl as your commander, we now have the options there for you guys. All right, moving on to a tribal deck. Hydra Tribal and Pelucranos Reborn is, a, again, a commander that surprisingly not that popular. So I did my version of the deck. And as I talked about with that I think I did a couple of times talk about the, what I thought was the best direction here. Getting those dice triggers is, is really, really easy, I think, because there's a whole bunch of Hydras out there that are zero zeros that enter the battlefield with counters. So if we just cast them for zero, and of course, a lot of them just cost one mana, like a Feral Hydra, I can just pay zero for the X here. This is going to enter the battlefield, immediately die. So for one green mana... I get those two 3-3 three, three tokens. That's phenomenal value. And I know people will say, okay, but then your creatures are just dying all the time. And by the way, I'll also point out white and green do the token doubling effects, uh, you know, which I actually didn't do in here, which you could add in parallel lives and all that. So you get more of the tokens. Actually, there's a lot you can do with that theme. The theme of, I just have this one mana and X creature that is just going to die when it enters the battlefield. So for example, wild pair, right? A card that doesn't really see a lot of, it's kind of was made for commander. It doesn't see a ton of play. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if you cast it, right? So we cast that feral hydra. For just one mana, you may search your library for a creature card with the same power and toughness. Well, our Feral Hydra has a 0-0 zero, zero power and toughness, but so do a lot of other creatures in our deck. Obviously, all the Hydras. So we just go get another Hydra out of our deck. Another, doesn't matter what the mana value is here. All that matters is the power and toughness, right? It's same total power and toughness. And of course, zero and zero is a total power and toughness of zero. So we go get another one, put it directly onto the battlefield. Right. And of course, it's also going to immediately die because it has no counters on it. So with Wild Pair in play, I cast my Feral Hydra. I go get my Hungering Hydra. They both enter the battlefield, immediately die. And I end up with four 3-3 three, three creatures in play. That seems like pretty fantastic value. Ecological Appreciation, again, same thing. Search your library and graveyard which works with this, what we're doing here, for four creature cards with different names that each have mana value X or less and reveal them. So I'm doing X is one here. I'm searching my deck for four creatures that have a mana value of one, which we do have a bunch. And again, I can get them out of my graveyard. An opponent chooses, it doesn't matter what my opponent chooses. We're putting two of them directly into play. So this is four mana. Again, they're going to immediately die. And here I would likely get the ones just that are already in my graveyard. Four mana, I put four three, three tokens directly into play. That seems pretty good, right? Cards like Sentinel Flute, personal favorites of mine are extra good here because this is searching your library for a creature with a mana value of X. So for one mana, I go get one of those cards, right? Again, it's very easy to do. There's lots of support for this theme. Abiding Grace is a really funny fit here. Gets a creature card with mana value one from your graveyard and put it directly into play. So again, I got that Hydra in my graveyard. This just becomes, at the beginning of your end step, create a 3-3 creature with reach and a 3-3 creature with lifelink because I'm going to return that whatever Hydra directly to play and it's immediately going to die and I get the trigger off my commander, right? So that's what you're doing in the deck. It's a really great deck. And again, really powerful. It's doing the aggro strategy. I, I don't particularly love it. I played tested it quite a bit. It's really good. Just not really my thing. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of people out there that might like this one. It's doing a lot of really interesting things. All right, Moira and Tashar. Uh, again, not not surprisingly, this is a pretty unpopular one from March in the Machine. I did the Saga theme. That's it. There's not much to talk about here. This is black and white Saga Tribal, which of course is fits the historic thing and fits the returning stuff from your graveyard. I don't know if a lot of people are doing that, but I have a, a cast my Saga. Again, this is what I did with the original Tashar, where I'm, I'm doing something that fits both the cast trigger and the return trigger, right? Saga fits both of them because of course, when they run out that you sacrifice them and they go to your graveyard. So when you cast another one, now you can get it back. Pretty obvious what I'm doing here. I, I got a lot of that stuff. I'll just say Flicker is a great fit if you're doing any Saga tribal deck because it is flickering a non-token permanent. So it's a great way to reset right? If I have a, a, a one that I want to get back to zero or back to one, I guess, I just 
Two mana, I flicker it, it comes back into play and resets again. So that's a great fit. But obviously, it's pretty obvious what I'm doing here, right? Not really much to talk about. All right, I made another Nadir deck. I I, I love this guy as a commander. And th this definitely is one that I'm considering for myself as well. Um, I used to have a Nadir and Miara deck, Mono Black Elves. I ended up making that into my Kuan deck, which was a very similar Mono Black Sacrifice theme. That deck, funny enough... <laughs> was very you know, almost stacksy. It was a lot of forcing my opponents to sacrifice and it wasn't fun to play against. I played it against my patrons a few times. It wasn't fun to play against. I just don't like playing decks that aren't super interesting and fun like that. Funny enough, I went back in the other direction. Um, that deck I ended up turning into my Kinzu deck. So a lot of similarities. I just, I, I didn't have to, re I reused a bunch of cards, which was great. That's why my Kinzu deck, I very quickly was able to put that deck together for that reason because I already had all the cards lying around. Came back to Nadir few times and a, a few different obviously because it's a partner commander you can do all the different combinations i also think it's a phenomenal card in a lot of 99 because it's whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield and it's making tokens so it just fits in so many different themes even a treasure token theme it fits i think i'm making a white black version here and the the partner commander is not super important i tried a couple different ones i went with i ended up going with ravos i think that's the best i'm doing a sacrifice theme here even if Nadir dies, I can get it back with Ravos or any other creatures. But you definitely could do a couple different variations. Nadir is the build around here. I made this deck for a couple of reasons. One, because I wanted to try a white-black version of Nadir, because there's a lot of cards that work great here. Particularly Spirit Sister's Call, which again is another 99 card that I keep coming back to, which I think is just a phenomenal card in a lot of decks. It is, I, again, just, just with your Nadir, I can sacrifice my Nadir, and of course, it's going to make a bunch of tokens. And then on the following turn, I leave it in my graveyard, and I sacrifice one of those tokens to get back my Nadir. And people will say, oh, well, hold on now. If that permanent would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. But your Nadir is a leaves the battlefield trigger, so it doesn't matter if it gets exiled. I'm still going to get the trigger off my commander when it dies. So it just is phenomenal value. And of course, works with a lot of other things in the deck. A lot of commanders that work with this theme. Felisa, of course, you know, we're doing the token theme anyway. Felisa, funny enough, is doing not only the token theme, but the counter theme as well. What a slam dunk in this deck, right? So just our commander alone, when our commander, you know, Nadir leaves the battlefield, this is whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it had counters on it. So it's going to have counters on it. It's going to create a bunch of elf warrior tokens and also is going to, create a bunch of inkling tokens. So great fit here, Thalise as well, because we're in the black white counter theme and we're also in the black white token creation theme. Um, Feast of the Victorious Dead is a great one that came out in Aftermath that just a, a really neat fit with Nadir if you happen to be doing a white black Nadir at the beginning of your end step if one of more creatures died this turn, which that's going to be happening a lot. We are in a little bit of a, a, we're in a sacrifice theme here for sure. I wouldn't say an aristocrats theme, but definitely a sacrifice theme. You gain that much life great and distribute that many plus one plus one counters among creatures you control so that's fantastic obviously there's a lot of creatures that we want to be putting plus one plus one counters on here including alenda the dusk rose again another commander that fits the theme of both plus one plus one counters and creating tokens so you know, again, we're in the black white token creation counter theme, just a slam dunk in this deck. Rosie Cotton of South Lane, slam dunk if you're in a white black Nadir theme, because whenever you create a token, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control other than Rosie. So when we're creating tokens, you know, again, we sacrifice our Alenda, create a bunch of tokens, put all those counters on our Nadir or vice versa. Again, there's just a lot of great synergy here uh, with, with Rosie, of course. I decided... And this is what is making this more of a fringe idea. And uh, funny, again, I was talking about the irony of the directions I went. I decided to go with more of a stacks theme here. Um, original stacks theme. Again, I talk about it all the time. Smokestack was the original stacks deck. The I force everyone to sacrifice stuff. I don't have Smokestack in the deck, although you definitely could because it works really great with Nadir. All right. And I know a lot of people might not find this fun, but... I actually think it works great here. So I have Cataclysm in the deck because what you can do is I have 20 counters on my Nadir. Let's say I have 10 counters on my Nadir. I get to keep one creature. I'm going to keep my Ravos. So I so let's say I have Ravos and there's a lot of different, again, Alenda or any of these, Felisa, any, just imagine those creatures in this scenario. It's game ending, right? Everyone's going to sacrifice all their stuff. I'm going to sacrifice all my stuff, except I'm keeping my Ravos or I'm keeping my Felice. 
something like that. That that something some scenario like that. I sacrifice my Nadir, which has a power of ten. Let's say obviously when it dies, I get all of those elf tokens. If I have my Ravos in play, they all get the Anthem effect. If I have my Felice in play, I now get all of those spirit tokens on my end. It's game over, right? That's why I think it works so good. Balancing Act, same thing. I have that in the deck as well. Possessed Portal, again, works. It's just a really great win con. It's staxy for sure, but it's a great win con in the sacrifice theme. And Dimensional Breach, again, another card that I, I just think it's a fun. I honestly think this is a fun card. I know people might not think so. Exile all permanents. And then every turn, you just pick one thing, put it back into play. And again, I'm getting a huge advantage here. That's why I think it works. I have 10 counters on my Nadir. Now, when I exile my Nadir, it's a leaves the battlefield trigger. So nobody has anything. I got a bunch of elf tokens and it's going to be very easy for me to close out the game before my opponents can rebuild the board. And again, the following turn, I put my my Ravos back into play. So now I have that Anthem effect, right? So I might build this one myself. I don't know. I play with my patrons a lot. So I'll have to discuss with them whether or not they'd be okay with me because I don't, I don't want to build a deck if I'm never going to be able to play it. But I like to have decks like more and more. I have been trying to make decks rather than just all my decks being good stuff or value decks or whatever. Or, you know, I, I really started to go in the direction where I have all these decks that, you know, even though they're all different, I'm just I have the same strategy in each one. And I would like to have a few decks where I have it's just completely different than than what else I am doing. And, and having a stacks deck, you know, it's not locked down. Nobody gets to do anything. Not that kind of stacks. This kind of stacks that most people hate. It's I cast a cataclysm or a dimensional breach and we're all in the same boat and let's figure out how we're going to close out this game. I think that's interesting. If you think it's interesting as well, the deck list is in the description. All right, moving on. Olivia, another one that I've done on my channel before. And, uh, you know, again, this is funny enough is another one, just like with Gimli, where I, they came out with this super interesting alternate art from the, like the artist secret layer artist series or something. Really sweet looking card. And I'm like, I think I'm going to make another Olivia deck just for that reason. A lot of great cards in here. Again, there's there's a lot of new ones that came out recently. Here I focused a little more on, it's very easy for me to get empty-handed. So I did the the Hellbent thing a little bit here. So if you're interested in, in a Hellbent strategy, funny enough, they haven't actually made a commander there for that. I put a lot of neat cards in here that fit the Hellbent strategy. You know, I the, obviously the Hellbent cards, but also empty-handed strategy. Dark Suspicions is another one that I, I really like in that theme where I'm punishing my opponents for having a bigger hand than me, which is obviously in a commander game, not that difficult to do. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Samut, Vizier of Nakdamun. And this one again is not very popular. I'm a little surprised. Draw a card on your commander. They, they've revisited this theme quite a bit recently. The creature entered the battlefield this turn thing. It's kind of a weird thing to be focusing on, but they've done it quite a bit. Not very popular at all. The, the aftermath set in general is not very popular at all, so that might have something to do with it. I did this because I had a, a deck a long time ago, my Dragonlord Atarka deck, which I've talked about a few times on my channel. Um, I don't currently have it put together in paper, which did the ETB strategy in green and red. And of course, red and green don't do that very well. The best way to do it is with the Heat Shimmer or Flame Shadow Conjuring I Create token theme, which works, of course, very good with your commander because that's a creature that entered the battlefield this turn. So that's what I did here. And there's a lot of red commanders doing this, like Jaxus, of course, will work here because it's doing that. Felden, which is essentially the, the card that I built my Dragonlord Atarka deck around, is obviously doing that. That will work here really, really well. Ortheon, Hero of Lavabrank, doing that as well. So of course I have all that in there. Doors of Durin, which is a card that came out in Lord of the Rings, is of course a slam dunk in this deck because you're having that creature immediately enter the battlefield. So that, that's going to work really great as well. So I don't know if there's not a lot of surprises here. I, I think you could probably figure out what's going on in the deck very easily. Getting in for damage, drawing lots of cards, creating lots of tokens. Tabor and Lumia. And this is one that I think I referenced a couple times in videos, you know, going back to a five cards video a while ago where I talked about, I think Warkite Marauder was one of the cards I talked about where it's slam dunk in a deck where you are throwing damage around because I can turn my opponent's Avacyn into an 0-1. It loses all abilities and then I can very easily kill it. And this is why. And uh, Mercurial Transformation was a card that I think is a great card. And I stumbled across it because I was making this deck. And of course, because I've referenced this deck in a couple of videos, obviously at some point I'm going to have to throw it out there for you guys. Again, the umpteenth time, and as I've talked about before, where I'm trying to put an Is It deck together, I'm trying to make one, guys, and it just, I don't know. 
I don't know what it is. I don't like the red blue combination. I just don't. Um, it just does not appeal to me. So here's another is it deck that I've made that I'm not going to do myself, but you know, you guys can go to go nuts with it. A lot of, I turn my opponent's creatures into one, one, so I can easily kill them. Obviously for that reason, scalding salamander, another old favorite of mine, which I think is a slam dunk in a lot of decks, which I've talked about, I think recently on, on a five cards video slam dunk here, because of course it's sort of a backup for my commander in a ways. I'm also doing the, I hit myself strategy with brash taunter, where I'm doing damage to my own creatures. So why not throw that in there? Imp ill tempered loner, right? That kind of stuff. I'm, I'm doing that anyway. It's very easy for me to do. So so why not? Also doing the, I'm giving my creatures flying. So floodgate, a funny old card. Funny enough, this works with the deal damage theme as well. You know, I don't know if people auto include this in the Tabor and Lumia decks, but I think it's a funny fit. If it gains flying, you sacrifice it. What a funny old card. I, I love that they used to have cards like this, that again, flavor was so important in the game. I hate that they've gotten away from that in, in Magic. It's just such a flavorful card. I, I love it for that reason. It's dealing damage to the amount of uh, islands you control, obviously, because it's a floodgate. Really great card in this deck, I think. And also because it's easy for me to get in for damage, I put Orca Squatters in here, right? Why? Is it easy for me to get in for damage? Because of course, I'm also giving my creatures flying very easily. So I can put my Orca Squatters in here. Funny old card again. I have a few of these where it's very likely that I will be attacking and unblocked so I can start stealing my opponent's lands. So that's another funny thing I did in the deck as well. I think this is a really neat deck. Um, not super powerful, super casual for sure. You know, you're killing your opponent's creatures a lot. They might not love that. But again, just not for me. You guys can go after it. I made another creature type changing deck. You know, it's it's crazy. Again, this is another theme that I just keep coming back to just because I love so many interactions in this theme. I've talked about it on a 10 deck ideas video. I talked about, I actually made a deck. The The first one I made was Azorius. This one is Jeskai, red, white, and blue. I decided to go with Zergo and Ujitai, brand new commander. Again, if you are thinking of building that commander, here's an idea for it. I went with this for two reasons. One, because it's whenever one or more dragons you control deal combat damage. So of course that works with our commander, but also now because I'm doing the creature type changing thing, it's good to have a commander. And funny enough, I think the one I did with the blue white version, was that the Ojitai? It was, it was the dragon tribal thing again, because I can turn any of my creatures into dragons and then get this trigger. Right. And also return a dragon to owner's hand. So it's a good way if I want, for an example, I have an Okeromancer in this deck. I can turn my Okeromancer into a dragon. If I can get in for damage with it, again, it's just a possibility, right? There's there's a lot of possible scenarios in this deck. Return my Archaeomancer to my hand so that I can reuse it, right? So it, it I thought it was a good fit there. Really unpopular commander, not, not a big surprise. That's another reason. Um, I, I did all the, I'm not going to reiterate. There's a lot I'm doing here. I'm not going to reiterate all all of it. Um, there, there's a bunch with the creature type changing thing. I'm not going to get into all of it. There, you have to go back and watch that video. I'm doing all the blue white stuff that I did in that video. So you can go back to find out all the combos and, and all that stuff that I'm doing there. Uh, th then I threw in some red stuff as well. Um, Siege Dragon is one I threw in, enters the battlefield, destroys all walls your opponents control. So it's a creature type th thing that works here. So what I can do, again, just as an example, Shields of Velis Valakard, a really important card in the deck that changes all creatures, target opponents control into all creature types. So all my opponent's creatures are now changelings and when my Siege Dragon enters the battlefield, it destroys them all because they're all walls. As an example, uh, Varchild is another one that I thought was a neat fit here. When it leaves the battlefield, gain control of all survivors. So again, I can do the change those creature types into survivors or all creature types. And then when my Varchild leaves the battlefield, I gain control of all my opponent's creatures. One of the neat things you can do, again, adding in the red. Um, another thing I did here is I just threw in a couple of really neat combos in the deck, okay? Um, I have one I have talked about before on my channel with Mirror Weave in the deck with Drooling Ogre. So Drooling Ogre, I turn, you know, I cast Mirror Weave, change all creatures into Drooling Ogres, cast an artifact, gain control of all creatures. It's just a funny janky combo that happened to fit in the deck. I also, because I had mirror weave in the deck, I thought, okay, well, there's a couple other neat combos that you can do. And I actually got this from someone. This is not even my combo. I mirror weave 
and turn all creatures again into a scalding salamander. This is another deck that I threw it in. And if all creatures are scalding salamanders, I can now attack, because they're all two ones, I now attack with my scalding salamander and kill all my opponent's creatures. I thought that was a really neat, I got that idea from somebody else and they had the magma phoenix thing in their deck, which I, I threw it in here because I it fits the colors. So I can mirror weave, change magma phoenix into a, all creatures are magma phoenixes and when it dies, it deals three damage to each creature and each player. So if all creatures are magma phoenixes and one dies, you get this chain reaction effect, which I think will likely just draw the game because everyone, di maybe everyone dies at the same time. I'm not sure how it would work. It's neat though. I threw it in the deck because why not? I got a lot of neat interactions here. It is the mostly the creature type changing thing. Again, another favorite combo mine, which I just threw in the deck because it fits is planar guide. I exile all creatures and then I cast gather specimens. There's actually funny enough, I'll, a few combos in here where you can gain control of all your opponent's creatures. Um, I gather specimens and when all those creatures enter the battlefield again, they're gonna enter the battlefield under my control. It doesn't really fit with what you're doing, but I threw it in here because why not? So mostly the creature type changing thing, but also I got a lot of funny janky combos in here as well. And again, because I'm doing all those different things, you can throw your favorite combos in there as well, right? I, I just have a lot of my favorite combos in, there. again, the creature type changing ones as well, like Pure Reflection and Shields of Velis Vel, where I turn, you know, so my opponent cast a creature, this triggers, I turn all their creatures into reflections and they end up destroying their, their whole, they, they board wipe themselves. I think that's a funny combo, all that kind of stuff. Really neat, janky deck. If you guys are interested, it is in the description below. All of them are in the description below. Feel free to go nuts if you like any of these ideas or all of them. And I guess if you are thinking of buying any of these cards for any of these decks and you want to put them together, I have a TCG player link in the description below as well. Feel free to give it a click. It helps support the channel. That is it for today, though, and thanks for tuning in.